<laughs> yeah, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> My name is Trevor Mason, uh, born March 18th, 1970, here in Terrace, BC. Uh, let's see. When I grew up, I grew up in a Christian family. My uh, my dad's born again Christian. Uh, my mom was born again Christian. Uh, we went to. I've been to Toronto. They went to uh, the Salvation Army uh, Academy, uh, both of them, and. Uh, you know, it's from what I remember, I remember from when I was one and a half years old, two years old, I remember. I remember living in Port Simpson. Uh, that's one of my first memories growing up, you know, and everything was all, it was all good then. You know, everything was all good, you know, I lived in a good family and everything. Uh, you know what I used to do? I used to go down, uh, there was a hill in Port Simpson, but I was a daredevil, daredevil. But I used to... Uh, so I used to go down a hill. I used to go down a hill in um, in uh, Port Simpson in, in my little wagon, and I remember going down and a wheel would break off and I'd, I'd fall on the ground and I'd be sitting there laughing my head off and I I drag my I drag my wagon back up the hill again and uh, you know my dad would fix my wheel and then I'd go down again and do the same thing and then drag it back up the hill. He'd fix my wheel. I'd go down again, <laughs> back and forth. But I had good memories when I was growing up. I did. I had lots of good memories. I have, uh, I have a brother. I have a younger brother. He's just one year younger than me. He's my wet. I always used to hold on to him all the time when he was younger. And uh, yeah, we uh, you know, had, a good, had a good upbringing when I was younger. And then everything fell apart. My, uh, my dad and my mom, they got divorced. And um, they... My mom was already an alcoholic. She grew up that way. And my dad was an alcoholic. He grew up that way too. And uh, I just, uh, my next memory was when I was what, four years old. I think it was about four years old. And, uh, you know, everything just started falling apart from there. You know, my I grew up around alcoholism. The whole family around this area here was, they were all, they were all drinkers, hard drinkers and uh, I just remember, I just remember that's, that's the life I grew up in. And, you know, as I got older, I, grew, I got older and, um, you know, I just remember, and then I remember about eight years old, uh, just living in an alcoholic family. They all, they all drank, didn't know anything, didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. It was just like, that's, it was a normal life. That's what I grew up in, so that's what I knew. So as I got older, uh, <clears throat> I moved away. My dad, uh, my dad came into the house one time and he seen me and my brother digging around in, in uh, his cupboards looking for food. He walked in, power was all cut off and everything else like that. But him and I were digging around for food, and then that was it for him. He said, "That's enough," and he took me away. He took me away from my. Uh, he took me away from my. From my mom and he brought me to Prince George and I lived I lived there he took me away when I was 10 years old me and my brother and we moved to Prince George for probably about I would say about five years we lived there and then 
it was probably around 13 years old that I had my first trick. And from there, it just, it just got worse and worse and worse over the years. And when I was at Prince George, we lived there and we had a really good life for a little bit. But the whole, the whole scenario of me living with my family, the way they were and how dysfunctional we all were, that's what that's what that was uh, the whole thing I learned how to grow up I grew up being an alcoholic and I grew up learning how to be an alcoholic and nothing it, it couldn't erase any of that it couldn't erase any of that for me as much as I wanted that to change no I didn't know how to change any of it. It was all normal to me. It was normal, normal life. And I, I just learned, I learned how to be that person. So it was etched in me, it was etched in my, it was etched in my heart, it was etched in my head. I didn't know any other way. And I, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't know any better. All of a sudden, my dad takes takes us. We move off to Prince George, and we were on our way up there, and we lived there, and uh, it was already it was already. It felt like it was too late. It felt like it was too late for me. I was ten years old. I was ten years old, and my dad took me away. When he rescued me, I was 10 years old. You know what? I was 10 years old when, when, when God finally reached out and took, took us away. He knew my, he knew my future. He still knows my future. He knows what it is. And you know what? He, he made it, he made it possible. For me to be where I'm at. I'm not saying that this is where I need to be at at the moment, but this is where this is what happens. No, it's not too late. I'm just about this close to bowing out. It's like stepping up, not stepping down, stepping up. We drink this. We drink coolers and we, we that's what we do. We sit around and we We drown drown out all our pain and our sorrows and our hurts and our fears and I've talked to everybody out here and they've all been abused. And I'm one of them. And I just can't get past it, you know. I'm having a hard time getting past it and trying to figure it out. And I can't find my way. I just can't. I don't I don't know. Don't we know? So, anyways, uh a few years go past for my dad and I and my my brother, my younger brother, and he 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 grabbed us and he he took us because we were we were the we were the we were his younger boys and he wanted to he wanted to bring us up you know in a better life and um, and he did the best he could with what he knew he didn't know any better either he didn't we we, we we tried, he tried, and I tried, and we tried to uh, click, and it was just, uh, it was just too much. You know, and I, I started acting out. I started rebelling even more, and then, about 13 years, when I was 13 years old, and I started drinking. I started drinking, and uh, that was in Prince George. Uh, that's another part of my story. He, when I was when I was 12 years old, 
he got into an industrial accident and it, it crushed it was actually uh, uh, what do they call it what did they call it it swung down what happens was the log came along it it uh, it hit hit a light and it swung down and it locks the lo knocks the log off into another thing but one of the lights or the chains came off and something like that so he went down there to uh, fix it up and uh, and the, he didn't the guy that was supposed to turn the lights off for the for the lasers it came down and swung and it hit him and crushed his head my dad, I remember seeing my dad in the hospital when he was, when I was 12 years old, and his head was just like a balloon. He had blood coming out of his ears, his mouth, his nose, and, and he, uh, you know, he, he actually died on the operating table. They said he died on the operating table. Now, I'm going to tell you the story here, it's, and it's about... It's about being there. He died on the operating table. He was Christian at the time. And I remember him telling me this story distinctly. He said, when I died, he goes, I went straight to heaven. He goes, I walked through the door and I, I he goes, I walked through and I seen all my, all my, all my my aunties and uncles, they were all there and they were all waving at me and they were happy to see me and everything else I got. And then you see Jesus. You seen Jesus. He said, I remember seeing him. He came up to me. He looked over and he was smiling away and he was talking away to some other people. And then he came over and he, he looked at me and he looked at me. He had holes in his hands, both hands. He said, he came up to me and he goes, and my dad's name Morris. He goes, Morris he goes, I'm not done with you. And he put his hands on his shoulder instantly. He went he came back. He was back on earth again. And then You know our lives changed after that. It did. For me it did. For me it did. And uh it was rough, you know, he, uh, it took a long time for him to recuperate from that, and, uh, it, it, but like I said, you know, for my, for my drinking, my drinking and my, and my, you know, my addictions, it's, it already, it was already in, entrenched in me, it was already built in, all I knew, yeah, all I knew was, all I knew was uh, I needed, I didn't know what I needed. I was already hurt. I was hurt long before that. Like I said, my addictions and my everything was just already entrenched in me. And I, uh, I did, I did what I did. You know, I started, I started, uh, I started with, you know, alcohol. I met up with friends, you know, you're a teenage and you meet up with friends and then all of a sudden you start, I went in to start struggling with liquor stores and I started boosting all the booze, just, just stuffing it all over the place, you know. Back then you can do it. Uh, but, and that's when I started. You know, I just, I remember drinking at the age of 13 years old. And I started, uh, started from there. And my dad couldn't handle me anymore. He lasted about maybe a year, I think it was. I was I think I was 15 years old, maybe two years, before he actually had enough. There was a lot of abuse that happened in my life. Um, it, it wasn't sexual. It, I never got hurt in any other way. I just did, you know, I just I, I witnessed a lot of it. So that, that's where I was at. I remember being at that point where everything was getting intense and, uh, you know, having to grow up when I was eight years old and uh, witnessing abuse, 
I was in a home that was uh, that was full of alcoholism, and all they all they did all we did was drink. Didn't know any better. Trying to learn my ways, you know, and uh, it didn't always it 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 felt normal when you're sitting there when you're sitting there watching people get beat up. Uh, when you watch uh, women get abused in their sleep, that was a normal thing. It was normal for me to watch that. I watched it all the time. And you know what the thing is? Is that's all residential. Residential stuff that they went through. They got abused by the, you know, by the, by the priests and by the, you know, the people they trusted. They got taken away. Hey